much, you know, that's good. That's to, good. To, be able to, to talk to individuals, but yet you're like, why can't they get over the cycle? Sometimes a trained therapist can mm. get to the problem. All right, you're going a little ahead of yourself. Amen. <laughs> okay. I stop. I stop. I stop. It's the truth. Um, no, that's good. No, keep on. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I wanted to say, um, Pastor McTear, is mm-hmm. Pastor McTear still, are you still yeah. speaking? Okay. Go no, ahead. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Sometimes a trained third. Okay. We're going live on Facebook. Go ahead. You can continue. Go ahead. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> oh, okay. I wanted to say a little bit something about abandonment because I was raised with like my grandparents. I wasn't raised with my parents maybe until, well, from since I was small. So there's something when you feel just totally rejected. And that did it did something to me. I mean, no offense to my mom, my dad, but it does something to a child where they grow up. And sometimes you're so lost in the world because you're seeking everyone else to love you. And that's because as a person, you wasn't taught about the love of Jesus Christ. So me, I seek men to love me. Not that I gave my body over to each and every man, but I wanted to feel that father's love. I wanted to know what it is for a man to say they love me and put their arms around me, you know? So I seek that. And for a very long time, that was Kazandi until God started speaking to my heart and I started seeking God, that's when I got my deliverance. It took one other man, the last man, to disrupt my life in such a way. I bawled my eyes out to the Lord, and I said, Lord, enough of this. I feel this way. I know why I feel this way now, but I'm tired of being used. I'm tired of men rejecting me. I'm tired of giving my body over to people that do not love me. Mm -hmm. God, show me how much you love me. And that day when I sat on my bed, I'm telling you, my whole life turned around. It just turned around. And it's only, it was only surrendering to God. Yes, 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 yes. That's so right. How that's wow. How you say you surrender to God. And a lot of times us women and even men but we're talking about women today. (laughs) Um, A lot of times relationships with that spirit of abandonment, it's like, it's easy for a man to spot off a woman that's, Mm. that, that, you know, that's needing love Mm. and they use that to their advantage and to, to really, they have no good intentions sometimes but yet we thank God that God, no matter where we're at, God knows how to find us. Mm. He knows how to, even though we go through that hard thing and you went through that hard thing with them, oh, God yeah. knew what it took to get you right mm. where he needed you. And Thanks sometimes Lord. we have to go through those things, those tests, those trials, because once you done been there, you said, I'm not going back there because I know what God has done for me. And can't no man bring anything that that's better than Amen. what God has brought Amen. in my life. Amen. <laughs> and God will use that. God will use that. I, I have a lot of the same testimony. And what I've noticed in my life is that God, as we know, he will take our ashes and turn them into beauty, right? And he uses those. I, I talk to girls and I worked with children, uh, teenagers for many years. And I would use my experiences to help a young girl see that I've been there, done that. I understand where you are and I've been delivered and so can you. So God uses those and we we praise him for our experiences that he can use them for his glory, right? Amen. Now, what about, you touched on it already, Pastor Leah, but what about the word curses? those word curses that we even put on ourselves or those word curses that has been, that has been just 
thrown at us at childhood or just, you know, hey, you will never be nothing. You're never going to do this. And you're, mm -hmm. this is all kinds of stuff that we carry. Yes. How can we, how do we handle this? Because even the things that we speak about ourselves, what we speak will come to pass. Yes. What yes. we think and what we speak comes to pass in whatever capacity, thought or spoken. It can mm -hmm. come to pass. So how can we overcome those negative word curses? Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about death and life is in the power of our tongue. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Hey, we speak stuff sometimes unknown. I say stuff sometimes unknown, like, oh, wait, hold on. That ain't uh-uh. Um, a lot of times the the we got to put the word of God in place of the negative on what comes our way, the curses that that, like you said, has been spoken. I cringe when I hear people talking to their children and saying ugly things. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you you don't realize it, you planting a seed in that child before they even get a chance to grow. You know, and, and the thing is to overcome those things, we got to begin to speak affirmation. We got to get in the word of God, even mm -hmm. for those who don't have a relationship with God or don't even know God, you got to begin to speak affirmation to yourself. You know, I'm beautiful. You know, I'm smart. I'm intelligent. If you don't know the word, yeah. but that's how you overcome all the negative. And as Sister uh, Rosetta has said her name and how she said, I don't think she, I don't know, that's the exact word, she said, I don't think I'm high-minded, but I know who I am. And when you begin to speak that stuff, speak um, affirmation of your life and, and over you, you get confidence. You, you have a confidence about you that cannot be shaken when Amen. you begin to speak those things over your life. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And you know, it has the saying, right? Sticks and stones can break my bones and words can't do me no harm. They've been lying to us. <laughs> true. <laughs> That's the truth. That, that true. is not the that truth, y'all. Yeah. Woman of God, that is not the truth. As Pastor just says, in Proverbs, it says, death and life is in the power of the tongue, right? So that means we can speak life to ourselves, or we can speak death. We can mm -hmm. either pull down or we can build up, right? So yes. we, we definitely, you know, and a curse word, it can come from within. Many times I, I saw a cousin of mine, she said, I'm my worst enemy. Many times we can be our worst enemy in truth. Mm -hmm. And that's because sometimes of the pain the brokenness, the things that we've been through in life, and we feel like, you know, we cannot overcome. But girl, you are valuable. Yes, amen. We, this is serious. We are valuable yes. women to God. We are women of power. We are women of might. And if mm -hmm. we just step back a little bit and reflect on who we are on the mm -hmm. inside, God will show us. You yes. know, curse curse words only come from a place of the demonic realm whether mm -hmm. it's from your mother whether mm -hmm. it's from your father whether it's from your husband an ex-husband it's from the demonic realm so we have to know how to combat these things by the word of god see when you're being you know sometimes um i have you many times we want to feel love we have that way of exaggerating a lot of times mm -hmm. on the desires that is in us, you know, like, why me? But I had to tell myself, why not me? Mm. You know, because that curse can be turned around into a blessing. You understand? Because it's in that place where someone may have put you Maybe that's the place that God wants to meet you. Maybe that's the place that God wants to take you from. So when you have someone that you love and they're speaking all these negative things to you, like no man would ever marry you. You will mm -hmm. die before other men get you. Ah. Anybody ever been there? Ooh, You're yeah. gonna, you will die before any other man will ever get you. 
Mm. You know, all of these things spoken of you, you will always be a drug addict, a drunk. You are fat, you are ugly, you are wow. failure. Or what about, uh, their marriage ain't gonna last. Mm. I give them one year. That's a curse. Mm -hmm. It is a curse. And this is why we have to get into the word of God because we are women of value. Yes. We got to declare the word of God over us. The word tells us that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Thank that you. curse can be turned into a testimony. Amen. Uh -huh. amen. And that curse. Amen. The, amen. The testimony can change a whole generation. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we are not to be stagnant because of what others think about us. What did God think about us? Yes. What is amen. his thoughts about us? Amen. The, yeah. I have. Amen. Girl, you're valuable. You are valuable. So how do we get over these curses? You know, like I said, you overcome by your testimony. You have to share your testimony. We got to we got to speak the word of ourselves. We got to renounce some things. We got to let go of some things. Unforgiveness. A lot of us are dying because of unforgiveness. If you've been raped, if you've been molested, if someone is telling you that, oh, um, you deserve it. Girl, you don't deserve it. Mm. Uh -uh. We got to prophesy the word of ourselves. We got to declare that word over ourselves and make room for God. And I have here, only a broken vessel give God room to step in. Mm. Uh -huh. If we're not broken, where's the room uh -huh. for God? Well, mm. If we have no gap in our life, where's the room for God? That means we're whole. Now, anyone mm. here, are, are, are we fully, completely whole? The mm. word tells the woman, you were made whole. But many of us still have some issues that we're going through. Exactly. Amen. Many of us are still broken. So I say, God, step in. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Step in. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Yes. We got to make Amen. room. That's yes. good because I, I love there's power. There's such we really have to remember that there's power in the words that we say, right? Amen. And so we call it in my world self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, if I heard from my mom that you're not gonna amount to anything, mm. I receive that in and it affects everything that I do. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna be yes. open to the opportunities, I'm gonna be fearful, I'm not gonna take chances. I am going to live in a bubble because I believe that I am never going to amount to anything. Mm. First, wow. understand that we got to get to a place that we understand that, that why, yeah. where we have to be open to wanting to know why am I in this cycle? Why does this keep happening? Why do I have these emotions? And then we get to the root cause of it. It is by the things that were put into me. And then we can understand all of the things that God is telling us. We got to get to a place that we're ready to receive. We first got to be willing to understand mm -hmm. what it is that is a trick of the enemy, that it is not mm. those words, those things that I heard, they are not me. They're lies. They are a trick of the lies. enemy. And so yes. then we begin to receive and understand how God sees us and not until then. I love that you said that women, we are whole, but honestly, so many of us have holes. H-O-L-E-S. Mm -hmm. We have holes that we have not filled. And until we understand mm -hmm. what feel, who fills that hole, mm -hmm. we are always seeking and searching, looking for love in the wrong places, trying to fill that hole, but only mm -hmm. crying. Yeah. Right? Only yes, cry. yes. Mm -mm -mm. Lord, thank you, Lord. That's good. Before we go on to the next, um, I want to uh, call out Kyoko. Um, I didn't mean to miss you. She is also one of the co-hosts. Can you say hello, Kyoko? Where are you, girl? <laughs> Kyoko? Are you there? Kiyoko Adachi. 
Kelko Adachi. Let me see where she is. Okay, we'll get her later. I know she's on. All right, next. We're going to hear from Christiana. She's going to render us a selection. And just to give you a brief um, bio of her, Christiana is down to earth singer whose love of God propels her creative writing and adventurous living. She holds BA in music from Chicago Moody Bible, Bible Institute and has led ministries in American Samoan, Greece, Colombia, and now Alaska. Christiana is mom to be with her beloved husband, Montrese Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> I had to put my two pen in, okay? Yeah. And you can find her music on all digital platforms under the Christian Christiana. Please pronounce your last name that you use for your music. Ali Ali. It's Ali -Ali. A really, yeah, and it's very normal to not. Not no, I'm originally from American Samoa, so our G's are like an N, yeah. But thank you so much for having me. It's been a blessing to just listen and um, just learn because there's so much wisdom in this group that uh, you can just tell um, God has been doing a lot of wonderful things in each of your lives. Um, I'm just gonna sing a song by Jonathan McReynolds called Loving Me. And I'll let the words uh, speak for themselves. And as I sing, let's just contemplate the value that we have in God and in his, in his powerful grace that he extends to us. Yeah. Is this a good volume? Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. I'm nowhere close to a perfect woman And it takes a supernatural love to even understand That beyond the walls, behind the mask and confident smile was a broken one trying to grow up and make life worthwhile. And I know there were times that you probably shouldn't, but I thank you for always loving me. And I know there were days where you probably wouldn't, but I thank you for always loving me. Now I know there were days I look at myself, felt like less of a person compared to everyone else. What about this flaw too big, too small? Can I exchange? Trying to make a fall well, I fall short. I let sense slip away. When I look in the mirror, I don't like what I see. I thank you for always loving me. And I know I get I just thank you for always loving me. You keep on loving me, yeah, yeah. You keep on loving me, oh. You keep on loving me, yeah, yeah. I just want to thank you for always loving me. I just want to thank you for always loving me. Oof. Amen. Amen. Mm, it's beautiful. 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 And praise God. Jesus. God knows what he, he knows what to do. <laughs> he knows what to do. Oh, yeah. Yes. Praise God. We are now going to hear from Sherry Gibson. 
She is a mental health, not counselor, but a therapist. And she is residing now in Tokyo, Japan, originally from uh, Cleveland, Ohio. And she's going to just talk about rejection and different um, areas that we've been already speaking about. And she's going to come as she, the way she is, and give us what she has. Sherry. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Uh, first of all, I am so excited to be amongst uh, such an awesome group of, of um, fellow be female believers, you know, sisters in Christ. Um, there's a lot going on with us all the time. And I have to tell you, sisters, that this subject hit me uh, at home. And it's like um, Sister Carol knew just what to give me to help me to work through some stuff. Right? So um, the topic she gave me was rejection. And we know that rejection is just kind of a part of life, actually. Um, we get rejected on our job almost every other day. Um, we might go for a promotion and we don't get it. Um, we're interested in someone who isn't interested in us. Um, you know, we want to participate in something uh, that, uh, that doesn't happen. We're believing for something um, that doesn't happen and we just can feel rejected. Um, but, but when we allow it to become a part of how we respond to things, right, to our environment, to the people in our lives, it can hold us back. It can keep us from um, moving forward, accepting uh, new opportunities. It actually holds us in a place of fear. And so I, I looked up the word rejection um, in the dictionary and it says to refuse to accept, to submit mm -hmm. to or to believe, to make use of. And so all of those things can keep us from in this place where we are not moving forward, uh, where we are stagnant. And so it can also cause emotions, feelings of shame and sadness and um, even anger, anxiety, uh, jealousy, and even depression because it can affect so many areas of our lives. Um, so, we can also wrongfully, once we get that in our minds, once it is a view, a way that we view things, we can wrongfully perceive that we're being rejected when we're really not, um, when, it, uh, when we allow it to become, to just permeate who we are. Um, we have to remember that the adversary uses those very things, right, that we, that we receive. He, he takes those things and he stomps on them and he projects them. He makes them much bigger and much larger than, we, than they are. And all of that is in an attempt to separate us from Christ, right? And so we have to know that he wants us to constantly be feeling rejected. Why? Because then we're not gonna believe that Christ loves us. We're gonna feel like we are not lovable, right? So he wants us to always feel um, rejected. I grew up, um, and this is no disrespect to my mom, we, we worked through some of these things uh, before God called her home, but I, she told me that I would never amount to anything. Um, she had pet names for me um, that uh, mothers should not call their children. And so I received that and I still struggle with that even knowing how, uh, what God says about me, knowing who I am, knowing whose I am, there are moments that I fall back. I call it our uh, default emotion. Everyone has it. Mine is inadequacy. What I received in growing up made me feel inadequate. So there are moments now when um, something can happen and quickly I go back to my place of comfort. I, I'm inadequate. But because I have learned who Christ is in my life, how he sees me, how he loves me, in spite of my history, in spite of the choices I made, I can, I can bounce back. But it mm -hmm. is inbred. It is who I am. It's about not always that, you know, and God can and he has for many people just taking that away. Often, it is a place where we have to constantly battle. And rejection for me is that area. 
So um, until we know that we are valuable, that we are beloved, um, I found in Psalm 118.22 um, that, uh, that we have to understand uh, who we are and, and who loves us. And that the, this spoke to my spirit. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone, right? The cornerstone, think about that. So what is a cornerstone? Um, it's the important quality of a feature on which a particular thing depends on, right? Or is based on. And then biblically, the cornerstone is the rock upon the weight on which the weight of the entire structure rest. Jesus is called, right? Um, our cornerstone he is Christ is our cornerstone of our faith. And so um, understanding that we are valuable even in and through our feelings of rejection, um, those moments that are going to happen because rejection is a part of, of living, right? Um, but that we have to remember that we as valuable women, as women of Christ, that we are cornerstones. We are help meets. There is so much that God has put into us that the world has twisted to mm -hmm. make us feel like there's something wrong. Um, and please, anybody jump in. I talk a lot. It's what they pay me to do for a living, so I do it. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so just put your hand up and I'll put that up. Um, and when we think about some of the things, some of the ways that we're rejected, uh, some of the um, things that we believe about ourselves has to do with some of the some of the societal expectations. We're told as women we have to be beautiful, right? And and we don't even know what beautiful means in in the eyes of most people. But we're supposed to be beautiful. We're supposed to be small and fit. Um, mm -hmm. We're supposed to be stoic. Don't be emotional, right? Now you can't show too many emotions um, because that's a sign of weakness. Um, <laughs> we have to be soft, gentle. Like we can't show strength. That's a manly thing. Women don't do that. And we must be <laughs> passive, right? So these are the things that decide that society throws at us that says, this is how a woman should be defined, right? Mm -hmm. and so feel rejected. We feel some of all of the topics that we've talked about so far. If we receive what the world says, then we're going to have a hard time. I can tell you now, I'm not small and I'm not fit. Um, I'm emotional. I'm loud. <laughs> I don't see this. So right off the bat, if I receive the things that the, that the world is saying, I, I'm a mess and I'm going to walk around a mess and I'm not going to respond to the people in my lives, the situations in my life in a godly manner because I'm a mess. Um, there's also the societal abuses that can happen that are real in the life of a woman that we cannot neglect, right? Um, sexual harassment, like mm -hmm. all of us have probably experienced that in one way or another. Unequal pay, we're still making less than, than most men in a lot of our um, the areas that we work. Um, the, the way that, that we're expected to balance work and child you know, our home lives and still be superwoman, right? And then, <laughs> uh, and the lack of support in trying to do that. And then we, we can't forget um, domestic abuse, right? That is prevalent in our society. Um, this is what we face as women. And without understanding who we are in Christ and how Christ loves us, that's a mess, right? How mm -hmm. could we get through that? This is what society says and does to women. And therefore, we have got to get in the word. We have got to understand how God sees us because we are on being pressed on every side, right? Mm -hmm. With the with the um the ideas and the thoughts of how this society has formed and said that we are to be. But we know that it was a lie, right? We know that even Jesus was rejected in his own hometown, right? His own people rejected him. Um, mm -hmm. The Samaritan woman at the well, right? We know she, she had five husbands. We know that she was in a place that people she was talked about and degraded. Um, and mm -hmm. then the woman with the issue of blood where people didn't even want to come near her. Talk about rejection. Rejection mm -hmm. has, it is all through the Bible. There are stories of rejection, but Christ has shown us how to overcome that. And 
So, and, and, and it is a journey as we have talked about. It is not an easy journey because it's coming from a deep place, that deep dark hole that, that is in most, a lot of us as women. And so we begin to devalue ourselves. And what happens when we devalue ourselves, our roles, our importance as a woman, we start to have emotional, mental health issues, mm -hmm. we start to have physical issues, we start to have spiritual issues, right? Um, because we devalue ourselves mm -hmm. as a woman. It all comes down to how we value ourselves. Yeah. And so, and so, I'm sorry, I got pages turning here. Uh, and so what, what can happen from that is that <clears throat> we start to go down a path um, uh, with emotional and mental health issues. And so mm -hmm. just statistics right quick, around one in five women suffer from some kind of mental health problems such as depression um, and anxiety. Uh, and that's uh, likely to be partly because we're, the, we're carers, right? And so we take on the cares of others. We um, take on the stressors of others and, um, and it, can, um, it can cause us to you know, begin to have emotional issues. And then there's also some of the things that I talked about earlier, some of the trauma related issues that, um, that can lead us into depression or anxiety, PTSD, um, things of that nature. So I love that Pastor said earlier that she believes in seeking help because sometimes as, as a body of Christians, we, um, we feel like that we should just take it to the Lord and it will all work out. And it can, and for some it does. But God has put in place people that he has trained up to be his help down here in this world, right? And so... When we get to that place, when we get to a place that we are emotionally unhealthy, right? I, I can't, it's hard to receive what God has to say to me if my emotions are all over the place. Oh, true. So yes, true. So getting those under subjection is important, but we can't do it, most of us, in and of ourselves. Um, we have to get, we, mo a lot of us need to seek help. And so we have to learn in, in seeking help, we can learn what the root problem is. Because if you don't know what the problem is, you can't work through it, right? Um, uh, so under, understanding that help is available, that God uses people and getting to a place where then you are open to receiving the words of Christ. You are open to his love. You are open to understanding that all of that stuff that has been poured into you throughout your history is a lie and a trick of the enemy, but you gotta, mm -hmm. you gotta get there first. Um, there are struggles within the Bible going back. There was um, Elijah in first Kings 19 and four that he prayed to die. He was on this journey and he was tired. He was emotionally spent and he prayed to die. What is that? That's suicide. That is wanting to die. God didn't kill him, you know, he restored him. He gave him strength. He gave and sleep and he was mm -hmm. restored and able to to continue on with his journey um we anxiety uh a lot of us suffer from some there are several kinds of anxiety mm -hmm. and a lot yeah. of us suffer from some kind but we are not to be anxious about anything right mm -hmm. but in every situation prayer and petition with thanksgiving present ourselves right our request to god um and the peace of god Right? Peace of God. The peace of mm -hmm. God which transcends all of our ability to understand yeah. will guard our hearts and our minds. We often forget that. We hear that he will guard our hearts. He will give us peace uh, and our minds in Christ Jesus. Yes. So God understands. He walked this earth. He had some of the same issues, dealt with some of the same thing. His response was different, but we can take heart in that, that there is another way that we can overcome. Um, so finally, as I close and, and move on, um, I wanna take go to Philippians four and eight. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever yeah. is 
Yes. Right. Whatever is pure, whatever mm -hmm. is lovely, whatever is admirable, what, if anything, yeah. excellent or praiseworthy. Think about such things. Think on these mm. things. Let these be the thoughts that permeate your very existence. But understand it's a journey. It's I'm sorry, somebody had called in. Um, it is a journey. So show yourselves grace. Mm. This is not an easy journey. You have to give yourself grace when you start to have some emotions that you find unacceptable. Oh my. <laughs> Grace, we got to give ourselves grace. I like what she said. <clears throat> when those things come in our hearts and our minds, we got to give ourselves grace. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yosetta, you had something you wanted to share and you, you can come in. So I, want, I, I wanted to say, because um, I, I heard her say about, you know, her mother, and my paternal grandmother, she had um, she had a a mean spirited um, mm -hmm. lover, but it was mean spirited. And I just know that sitting down with people and getting to understand the why, mm -hmm. yes, helps good. You That's good. to understand. Good. why these people are like that it's not targeted at you but it comes from like we we're saying the the curses and that deeply mm -hmm. needed places mm -hmm. and not making this a racial thing but as african americans and dealing with slavery and you're telling me what i ain't gonna be and what i'm all the negatives and I don't remember the person who said if you ever want to knock a person down mm. tell them what they ain't gonna be and it'll have them stuck for mm -hmm. the rest of their lives, rest of their lives. So true. but so true. we are identifying these things now as a generation that's yes. rising up in God and yes. being confident in God and knowing who we are <laughs> and breaking these generational yes. curses. Yes. Like my daughter just asked me today, she said, mom, um, I'm going to get skinnier because I'm getting taller. I said, girl, you already beautiful now. What is you? What? You beautiful now. Mm -hmm. You are not, you, you're not heavy. I'm like, and I had to take her to that bathroom. I'm like, what do you see? Because yeah. I see yeah. you're beautiful, you're smart, you're intelligent. And I tell her this every day. And I tell her, you're going you gonna to believe what your mama's saying. And you're going to mm -hmm. start saying it for yourself. So I just said all of that to say, when we're dealing with all of these different things, that people are dealing with, and you're like, mm -hmm. why are they so mean? Are they coming yeah. at me? They're not coming at you. If you just, I guess I'm, I, I, God done put that no fear thing in me <laughs> because I've had some people to be mean to me. And I'm like, come here, what's wrong with you? No. Did I do something to you? <laughs> and yes. then some of them will be like, no, yes. you? what's this? What's this? What's this this thing right here? Cause I feel uh, this. Yeah. And I call it out. And they're like, oh my God, I didn't know you said uh, mm -hmm. I had this up to you. I'm like, but you do. And I'm like, and what's this one, two, three, back this hug thing? Uh, I ain't the love. <laughs> I don't feel that. I'm like, I, I feel uh, you like this. I'm like, oh can Lord I feel the love? One, two, three, let it go. One, two, three, um. Uh. I'm like, I put on deodorant today. <laughs> every day. So can we stop? But I, I, and I try to do it always in love, you know, mm -hmm. but I, when I identify something, 
I'm going to go to you. I'm going to call that thing out because I'm like, I don't think you aware of you doing this and you yeah. hurting other people over here because yeah. yes. you yes. are hurt. And right. I need you to identify this. And just like yeah. she said, if you got to go get some help, if you need me to drive you to the place to get the help, let's Say go. This. But let's yes. get from this stuff. Say that. Say that. Say Amen. that. Say that. And Amen. that was so good, um, Sister uh, Yazetta, how you were saying, how you go to them like, what is this? A lot of, in the church, I'm just being honest, you get that a lot with people with that little, you know, and it's like, what, what's, what's going on with you? What's people will cop an attitude today. regardless. Mm -hmm. and, but my thing is we're supposed to penetrate. We're supposed to eat. People supposed to see Jesus oozing out of us. Right. But if we don't get that stuff right, he can't ooze out of us. I don't care how many church services you go to. I don't care how many times yeah. you don't ring up and down all around the church. Unless you get to the root cause of that stuff, you can't shout it out. You can't dance it out. You got to get to the root of that thing. As um, Sister Gibson was saying, get the help you need. Yeah. There are trained people. God has blessed people trained in this area to help. And a lot of times in the church, I feel we don't do that. A lot of people feel I ain't crazy. And, and, and how you said, we're not talking about... Um, you know, race, but in the African American culture, it was looked at as something like, oh, you crazy, you going to go talk to somebody. Mm. No, you're not crazy. It's like life is beginning to overtake you and overwhelm you. Yes. And before you do other stuff, you need to go get help. And I finally believe a lot of the issues, the drug uh, issues and stuff we have today in our society is because people are trying to cover up their pain and hurt that they have went through in life and so that's their coping mechanism is mm -hmm. turning to drugs or other other right. radical things instead of right. dealing with it and getting the help and and i say mm -hmm. even in the church we have got to go back and really evaluate our lives sometimes like sister rosetta said if we're approaching people and got an attitude and nasty and just mean-spirited Mm -hmm. We got to really dig deep and say, Lord, I need help in this area. Because right. you best believe God is dealing with people in that area. Mm -hmm. They just keep thinking they can keep going the same way they're going and they don't need help. But God be nudging all the time we need help at. We just got to yield and get the help so we can be healthy Christians. So yeah. we can ooze out the love of Jesus. So we can draw people to us because when you mean and ask, I don't want no parts. I, I say, God bless you. <laughs> Have a good day. I'm just being real. I'm praying for you, but you got some stuff that need to be dealt with. And as she say, she confronted it. And a lot of times we don't confront it because you're like, oh, Lord, just pray for them. Sometimes we can't just keep saying we're going to pray for them. We got to pull people aside and say, look, <laughs> this ain't healthy for you and it ain't healthy for everybody that come in contact with you. But you said something too, Pastor Nia. If we have the Holy Spirit oozing out of us, then we can over they can overcome through us. Yes. So as Yoseta said, and as Yoseta said that she speaks to them, she had to speak mm -hmm. and say, Listen, what's wrong with you? You know, how, yeah. how are we going? And that was love. I believe that was the love of God love. Yes. trying to bring them in because mm -hmm. we are the light of the world. In that place, in yeah. that situation, their light is not showing. So we yeah. got to lose the spirit of God on us, yeah. through us to get to them. We're running yeah. out of time. We run out of time real quick. Um, uh, there's a sister Shaquela. I'm, I may be saying your name wrong, but you had your hand up. S H Q U O L A. No, ma'am. I was clapping. Oh, you was clapping. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Amen. Amen. And um, sister uh, Sherry, are you? Did you have something else to say? I know you got cut. No, off. I did not. Was winding up. You know, I could, I could go on forever. God said enough. Um, that was my friend calling in. I apologize for that, but uh, okay. thank you for that, and I I pray it, it was uh, helpful to someone. Thank you. It was, and it is. It was. Um, okay, sister. Um, uh, Kyoko, I just want to just shout out to you. For a moment, Kyoko, hello. Just say hello to everybody. You are mute. 
<laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey, this is another part of our, she's our part of our co-host of the Leading Ladies of Women of Destiny International. Just wanted to say hello to her. She's in Tokyo, Japan. Amen. Amen. God Amen. bless you all. Okay. Um, I didn't want to keep you long. I know this, these conversations are getting better and better. <laughs> The closer we get to the end. Oh, my Lord. So discussion, are you enough? The mistakes that you made, how do we uh, um, overcome being, not feeling that we're enough? You are enough. You are valuable. But how can we overcome the mistakes that we made and, and to just know that we are enough for God? We are enough. Uh, somebody has that? I guess not measuring. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, Sana? Okay, so, um, <laughs> well, it's very interesting listening to everybody because I'm from Japan originally, but um, for me, um, there was a lot of pressure being, uh, trying to be somebody who you, them, uh, they wanted to be me to be somebody who I wasn't. So listening to my sisters here, there are lots of things from the past that um, was a struggle in living in this present time. But in my case, Japan is quite different from, um, from that. And for me, the struggle was that um, I needed to be somebody who others wanted me to be, as I said. So for me, learning to live the present moment was um, the hard time before I came to know the Lord. I always th thought, well, I'm not enough. I have to do more. And when, when I reached to that level, okay, that's not enough. I have to be better, more. So after coming to know Jesus, I started to live the moment which was so different. Yes. And, you know, because he has taught me how to accept who I, I am through his point of, through, through his eyes, like everybody's been sharing. And that really gave me rest to my soul. I, I could really breathe and enjoy the moment and live this moment, not the future, not the past, but to receive who he made me to be. And through being to churches and, uh, I mean, to church and fellowshipping with my sisters and brothers, they started to tell me the things that I didn't even know I was, like the qualities that the Lord has given me started to come out without me knowing, just drawing closer to the Lord started to blossom and sisters would tell me about uh, you know you are this or that and like oh really it's like lots of discoveries through his eyes mm -hmm. through my brothers and sisters and so um you've been walking with the law many of you and in my walk i'm thankful that he has really shown me to accept who i am and mm -hmm. um the scripture, Philippians 4.11, um, Sherry was talking about 4.8, whatsoever is lovely and all these things. Just a few verses later, um, I thought about the contentment, you know, accept who, who we are in Christ. It's to be content. So Philippians 4.11 says, not that I speak in respect to want, for I have learned whatsoever state I am there was to be content. And as we all said, it's a journey. I have learned. We have to learn to be content. And the content, um, I checked on Greek word, the original word for content. It means sufficiency within. And this is on the occurs in Philippians 4.11, this, this verse, where it refers to positive self-sufficiency inward adequacy ah. and that comes through the indwelling power mm. of christ ah. 
Mm. And also says that um, self-sufficiency, which is entirely God produ produced. So being content with who we are, accept ourselves first so that we can accept others. And it's all only through Christ that we can have self-sufficiency or mm. uh, can we do what, who he made us all to be. We, you all are beautiful, different flowers. I always kind of um, <laughs> imagine different kind of flowers, you know. Mm. I love iris. So if the Lord made me to be iris, I want to be that, not rose or lily, lily or dandelion. Let us find out who we are in him. And each flower is so beautiful. You all have a beauty that I don't have. And I'm not going to be try to be who you are, but be me and be content mm -hmm. and to learn to be content. And um, also about making mistakes we all make mistakes it's part of our journey and um we cannot grow without making mistakes it keeps us humble when we make mistakes i've, I've been learning many things recently learning having a new job being back in japan after 20 years eight years of being in canada it's like we learning so many things so i'm making many mistakes mm -hmm. but i'm learning <laughs> that be easy on myself you know if somebody else around us make mistakes we we it's, it's okay we say that to them right why don't we say that to us it's okay and another scripture i just want to quickly share is first john 3 20 21 for if our heart condemns us god is greater heart than our hearts Mm. heart and knoweth all things beloved if our heart condemn us not then have we confidence toward god so if we condemn ourselves if we blame ourselves saying what did, why did you do that you could have done better no mm. god knows all things and he's greater than our heart so let us have grace like uh, other sisters said and and um, it's not the mistake that defines who we are, but how we respond to the mistakes that we make mm. defines who we are and who we can be. Mistakes are going to happen and has happened, but as we learn and grow in Christ, we learn, you know, trip, but let's get back up faster as we grow in the Lord and then, and, and try again, try again. Right. Yeah. And just continue to grow. The mistakes will be less and less and less. It's, it's, it's not natural that whenever we are learning something new, we're going to make a mistake. So I just want to bless you all with that. And, Whoever else have something to share or add? Yeah, that is beautiful, beautiful, Sana. That was an awesome word. Amen. We need to just get back up. Make a mistake. Don't wallow in it. Get back up. Start again. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep it moving, as they say. Don't stop. But I just want to say God loves each and every one of us. He loves us so much. Everything about us, even the mistakes the ups, the downs, the, the problems. You can't stop God from loving you. You can't stop him from loving you. Whatever you had to face, whatever you are facing even right now, you are loved and you have an amazing value. Your value is on you. It's on you so strong. Sometimes we don't know how strong it is. You see this dollar bill? Can y'all see this dollar bill right here? Can y'all see it? This is the dollar bill and it is worth something, right? It's a dollar, it's worth a dollar. It doesn't matter if I ball it up like this. Is it still worth? Still worth it? Doesn't matter if I step on it. Y'all gonna hear me step on it. I step on this dollar. Is it still worth a dollar? Don't matter if I took, take it like this and go to the, 
make it real tiny and just just work out all my anger in this dollar is it still worth a dollar even if i tear this dollar up you know you're gonna say what you're gonna tear the dollar if i tear it up in one piece in two pieces is it still worth a dollar Yes, no. So yes. if the dollar never lost its value, mm. then you definitely can't lose yours. You are valuable. It doesn't matter if you've been stepped on. It doesn't matter if you've been spit at. It doesn't matter if mm. you're in the trash with a whole a lot of other nasty stuff. You are still valuable. Nothing can take your value away. Nothing can take your value away. We love you, ladies. Stand firm on his word. Continue to show yourself. If nobody else tell you, show yourself who you are. Mm. I am valuable and I'm not being conceited. I am being valuable. <laughs> okay? You are valuable. Don't let anybody take that from you. Amen. I appreciate Amen. all of you here today. And I want to just share a little bit of Women of Destiny and what we do. And then we're going to close out. Sister Nia is going to close us out with prayer. Praise God. Woo! Y'all getting ready to make me shout. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, can we give God <laughs> awesome. glory in this place? Let's give him glory. Yeah. That's not the way you know whatever mm. you know. Thank you, Lord. Give yeah. God praise. Hallelujah, praise. God. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And thank what he's you. doing in our lives. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing can take it away. Nothing. Nothing, nobody, no one. Mm. Nobody, no one. Yes, Thank God. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. So I just want to share women of destiny who we are. We are a movement that supports women globally, no matter where they are in our lives, where we are in our lives. Our mission is to empower each one to walk in their destiny. And then we have the uh, International Women's Prayer Network, which is a weekly prayer meeting where we share the word and pray for one another in expectation of change. And then we have the WOO program. This is a program that is designed to support women and bring women together to, to learn practical ways to balance life. And our primary purpose is to serve the least in our communities, not only for Japanese, for all women, or anyone that we come in contact with and to share the message of hope to the lost and to the healing, to the hurting. So we just wanted to let you know what we do. We do a lot of other things. Um, we also have a leadership uh, discipleship uh, classes each month, which we are needing more teachers, but amen, we are working on that as well. So. Um, continue to pray for us, pray that we will do the will of the Lord. We also do off, um, not always, not all on um, uh, social media, but we are also working face-to-face. Uh, -face. So even through the pandemic, God is still yes. doing what he wants to do, and we got to continue to do his will. Amen? Amen. Amen. And Sister Nia, God bless you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, for this time of sharing. During this time, before we end, um, end in prayer, we ask that those that can, that would give, you're giving to an awesome cause and you're sowing into good ground. And um, we ask each of you ladies or those that's watching by the way of Zoom or the way of Facebook, you can see the QR code that's on the screen, put your phone to it and it'll take you right to where you need to. So you're able to give an offering. And we ask that if you can to please sow a seed 
into this ministry. It's not just a, a local ministry, it's international. There's women from all over the world that's a part of Women of Destiny. And, and as, as Pastor Carol was explaining what they're doing, and it's important that we sow our money in good seed. It's, it's one thing to just sow your money anywhere, like we do at McDonald's and all those food places. But you want to sow in a place where you get a return on it, that God will bless you, not just financially, but many ways and more than one. So at this time, okay. we will ask that you would give and just text the uh, QR code that you see and give from there. Amen. Amen. And, and at this time, we, I will close out in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for this women conference, Lord, knowing we are valuable, God. No matter the bruises, the bumps that we have, Lord God, the scars, Lord God, but Lord, understanding our worth in you, Lord God. Understand that we're fearfully, wonderfully made in the image of you, Lord God. Lord, I ask, Lord God, everything, Lord God, has went forth, Lord God, throughout Lord, this conference, Lord God, that the women all that they glean from, that they take to heart, Lord God, go back and see, Lord God, areas, Lord God, that they need a little bit more help from you, Lord God. Lord, that we understand that we don't measure ourselves, Lord God, to the world. We don't measure our success Amen. to what the yes, world Lord. says is success, Lord God. But Lord, yes, let God. you be our measuring stick, Lord God, of who yes, we yes, are God. in you, Lord. Every accomplishment, yes, Lord, is through you, Lord God, Amen. not of anybody, yes, God. Lord God. God, but you and you alone, Hallelujah. Lord God. So teach us, Lord, to understand our value in you, Lord God. Yes, Touch every Lord. lady, Lord God, that's on this Zoom call. Every lady, Lord God, that's on Facebook, Lord God. Wherever they're at in life, Lord God, understand, Lord God, that they begin to glean onto you and grab hold to you, that you will show them who they are in you, Lord God. It's not what has been spoken over them, Lord God, the negativity, Lord, the curses, Lord God. But Lord, we, re we reverse, Lord, those things and we renounce those yes. things as has been spoken over these women, Lord God. But Lord mm. God, that we understand we are valuable in you, Lord God, and we yes, are women Lord. of destiny, Lord God. Amen. So Lord, continue to strengthen each and every lady, Lord, throughout the course of this year, Lord. Bless the works of their hands, Lord God. Let them measure up to you and you alone and nobody else, Lord God, and learn to live in the moment through your yes. eyes, in Jesus' name, amen, Jesus. amen. Amen. God amen. bless you, lady. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful week, a wonderful weekend. God bless you. Yes, God bless you. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank Everybody. you. Thank you, Kyoko. God bless you. Bye. Bye, Devana. Bye. God bless you. Bye. I'll be talking to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Bye. Amen. Mm.